I am so honored to be here for the celebration of Friends of 13 as, as both a trustee of WNET and a co-host, uh, as the voice of God just mentioned, uh, of NYC Arts. I have a unique vantage point from which to see the symbiotic relationship between 13 and its community, a uh, relationship that surely plays out in the mission of Friends of 13. The Friends of 13, under the expert leadership of Dorothy Pacella, there we are right there, understand, bravo. Without strong bridges uh, with a community of viewers and supporters and creators are so essential to 13, there would be no reason for many of us to exist. As a cellist, uh, I am thrilled by the depth and range and beauty of what 13 airs, uh, WNET's stellar programming and its commitment to inspiring, uh, informing, and entertaining is unparalleled and unmatched. I am so grateful to the Friends of 13 for continuing to find new ways to engage with the arts and artists uh, that surround us in this great city of ours. Whether connecting us with the beautiful St. George Theater in Staten Island or interviewing or introducing us to the now legendary Knights, a, a Brooklyn born orchestra that both honors and challenges symphonic music. The Friends of 13 see to it that we truly serve our community. I now have the honor of introducing to you the Knights, uh, whom I had uh, the great pleasure of meeting during the uh, production of Friends of 13 uh, sponsored film, We Are the Knights, which tells the story of Colin and Eric Jacobson, founders of the Knights, an, an orchestra that has come to represent the next generation of classical musicians. With us now are Eric and Colin. Paula, thank you so much. It is such an honor to be here celebrating one of the most precious things that we have in America uh, and something that we've gotten to do uh, and be a part of with this incredible film um, that, that you hosted, which was such a, an honor. Well, what I want to say that I just found out before we came up here, that we do have a friend of 13, Sylvia Masola. Where are you, Sylvia? Who's been a friend of 13 for 50 years. She was at that meeting. <laughs> She happened to be at that meeting that Bill Moyers referenced uh, earlier this afternoon. But uh, in all deference to you, Sylvia, Eric Jefferson brings a new meaning to Friends of 13 as his wife is one week overdue with their first child, and he's with us today. So there you have it. Never have you considered what the Crosstown bus means more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ooh, we're hoping the schedule is, is uh, right on target today. So uh, your, your father played the violin in the Metropolitan uh, Opera Orchestra. Your mother was a professional flutist. Describe to us what it was like for the two of you to grow up in this wonderfully rich tapestry of the, of the arts that was your home. Right, well, I, I think uh, the living room is such a special place for musicians and obviously for uh, people who watch Channel 13. It's the place where you're intellectual curiosity can happen in a very low-key and, um, you know, comfortable environment. And, I, and that's basically how our parents exposed us to music, was they would have music parties, and uh, we got to stay up late if we were listening. So as soon as we were old enough to do that with our friends, we had um, music sessions that went throughout the night, and uh, out of those uh, sessions, bonds of friendship formed that uh, live with us to this day. And, um, and I think it is very much about, um, you know, finding moments that, that last, that, or with music, you want a moment that lasts beyond the moment. And I think that's what, when you engage people's intellectual curiosity, um, which is one thing music can do, or their emotions, which is something Channel 13 does all the time, then it lasts beyond that moment. So g give us a sense, after our film aired, of, of what kind of traction you gained, what kind of doors were opened, and, and why it is so important uh, to have this stellar programming on the air that, that we've heard about all afternoon. The Channel 13 film that aired gave 
a bit of truth and what's that thing, you know, when you get legitimized by something that's beautiful because of what Channel 13 stands for and what it brings to um, music and art and news and those conversations, those conversations that you can have. It's an elevated conversation. It's not the lowest denominator. And that not only put us in another world in terms of being able to have a conversation with someone on the street who had just seen that, but when people came to a concert and they had seen the production of We Are The Knights, it's something that elevated us to a place of a conversation that maybe was only possible because of that relationship with the friends. And I think it, it is very much about, uh, it was a story uh, that we were given a platform to tell about hope, about the future of this art form that we love and what the Knights are doing as part of that, basically. And if you could just quickly give us a thumbnail sketch, not piece by piece, but a sense of how the repertoire you play today represents um, this kind of new niche that you're trying to tap into as a classical musician. Sure. Um, well, I'll, I'll just intro the very first piece because it is on this album that we did alongside our hero, uh, Yo-Yo Ma, um, called Azul. And um, the first piece we're going to play for you tonight is, uh, or this afternoon, I should say. I, musicians play at night, you know. Um, <laughs> is uh, by, by Sufian Stevens, who some of you may know as a great uh, indie singer-songwriter, but has this whole composition background as well. He's written stuff for the New York City Ballet. And Mike Atkinson, Knight's horn player sitting over there, who's a great arranger and composer, took these pieces of Sufian based on the um, years, uh, the signs of the Chinese zodiac and made incredible string versions of them. The whole album is basically uh, a celestial themed album and um, is about that exchange of perspective when you can see the earth from above, as I first did probably on programs like Nova on Channel 13, or you're looking up at the stars with the wonder of a child, basically. I just wanted to add that not only does Channel 13 give music a place, but it gives places like you and Bill an opportunity and an environment to rise to this hero stature that we all look up to because you are speaking truth to us. And thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you.
Thank you so much. <clears throat> so uh, we'd love to play now three interconnected pieces that we're about to take on tour alongside two wonderful musicians. One is Avi Avital, who plays the mandolin um, and is from Israel, and Kinan Azme, who's a great clarinetist from Syria. And, um, you know, music can bring people together in America, which is pretty cool. And uh, they are great because they're just inventing on their instruments all the time. But what we are starting our programs with all around the country is a suite of three pieces. One is going to be in improvisation in, um, in, in this, and Avi and Kinan will be doing this. I will be doing it today based on an Armenian melody. And then we will go into a, six, a 17th century Purcell Fantasia upon one note. And we will end with a piece by the Italian Sicilian cellist Giovanni Solima from Sicily. And um, this is fun stuff. So here we go.
so much. That was Giovanni Solima's La Camera Bianca. We just have two more short pieces for you. Uh, one was something that I wrote for my brother and myself to play, but as uh, you heard, he is off to make sure that um, he's with his wife if she gives birth today. <laughs> so we weren't sure if he was going to be able to play. So Gia Kim here is on cello, and I want to introduce everyone here. Logan Cole on bass. Margaret Dyer Harris on viola, Gia Kim on cello, Michael Caterizano on percussion, Nanai Iwata on violin, and I'm Colin Jacobson. So the, the piece that I wrote for Eric and I to play was something we did on the um, We Are the Knights documentary. It's called Lydia's Reflection, and we're going to go from that right into Ascending Bird a piece that uh, encodes a myth, a, a Persian myth of a bird that tries to reach the sun three times, and uh, as those stories go, doesn't make it the first time, tries again, and finally does reach the sun. And, um, you know, could be like the Icarus myth, or it could be uh, like the phoenix rising from the ashes. All stories I probably was introduced to through the power of myth. So here we go, uh, Lydia's reflection and ascending bird. Thank you so much for being here today. 